Hello Year 5. So today is going to be a fairly short lesson uh, because this is what is called an activity lesson. This is where you would work your way through the questions on the, the PowerPoint and then I would give you something practical to do in tasks like we did with the measuring units when I put the masking tape all over the tables. Obviously that's going to be a little bit more difficult today but I also don't want to send you home with challenge questions because I know if you do the challenge questions today, tomorrow's lesson is going to be pointless because tomorrow will be a recap lesson, but using problem solving skills. So I want you to have a go at doing some um, arithmetic skills at the end of this lesson and logging into your TT Roxars. But you're going to need a ruler for this. If you don't have a ruler, then you may struggle a little bit, but I want you to have a go at some of the activities that don't require a ruler. If you have a ruler, then that's great. Um, so we're looking at metric units today. Okay, so we're looking at measurements of millimetres and centimetres. We're also looking at converting other units of measurements for weight and capacity as well. So as always, before we start, let's warm your brains up and let's have a go at some of our fluency questions. So I would like you to have a go at B, C and E in your head, please. And I would like you to, for question A or for letter A and D, I would like you to use a written method, please. This one, although some of you think well, I can't work that out my head, is easier than you think. Okay, so if you're a timer, stopwatch, laptop, iPad, iPod, anything, set yourself a five minute timer, pause the video and have a go. Okay, here are your answers. So A is 1050, B is 881, C is 99, D is 52 and E is 61. So well done if you got all five of those correct. I'd expect most of you to be getting five out of five now, especially considering how amazing your arithmetic scores have been this term. So now let's test you a little bit more of your knowledge from what we've learned for the last two or three days. So how many millimetres are equal to one metre? How many centimetres are equal to one metre? What's bigger, smaller or greater than? So you need your inequalities here. 68 millimetres or seven centimetres. And how many kilograms are equal to 3,000 grams? So... Set yourself a timer, pause the video, and have a go. Okay, we know that there are 100 metres, uh, 100 centimetres in a metre, so there must be 1,000 millimetres in one metre and 100 centimetres in one metre. We know that 68 millimetres, we've then got to divide that by 10. Okay, so that's going to give us 6.8 uh, and 7, or 70 millimetres and 68. So we know that 70 is going to be bigger. Again, we divide this by 1,000, we know that 3,000 grams is the same as 3 kilograms, okay? Well done if you've got all four of those correct. There are different ways of going about working them out, so if you did it in a different way and still got the right answer, doesn't matter, the right answer is all that matters, okay? So well done if you've got those all correct. If you did make mistakes on there and you know where you went wrong, make sure you correct them so that you can learn from it ready for next time. So this is the end of my ruler, okay? It's a bit of a blurry ruler, but it'll do nonetheless. So... Anyone know what these numbers here represent? Good. Represent centimetres. So what do all of these squiggly lines up here then represent? Good. Those are the millimetres, okay, which represent an mm. And on a, on, a, on a ruler, usually you'll see a cm and an mm next to each other. Now, if we were to count all these, we go one, two, three, four, five. So that extra long one there is five of, of whatever measurement you're looking at. Six, seven, eight, nine, then ten. Okay, so we know that ten millimetres is the same as one centimetre. So let's measure this. So how long is this line here that I've drawn? I'm going to get my ruler out. Now, we know that when we measure anything, we always start from zero. Same so we're measuring angles, we're measuring lengths anything okay we start from zero so i've lined it up along there i'm going to read it all the way along and i can see here that it takes me to seven i think it takes me up to the six so i've got seven whole centimeters because i've gone past seven and then i know that i've got six millimeters now there's more than one way for me to be able to write that okay so i want you to pause the video how else could i write seven centimeters and six millimeters there's more than one way to so pause the video and have a go Okay, so if I partition this, so can I change it all into millimetres? I've got 70 millimetres and 6 millimetres, that's 76 millimetres, okay? If I then have a look at my conversions of numbers over here, I know that if 1 millimetre is the same as a tenth, and I counted these all along, I know that I've got 7 whole lots and 6, so I've got 7.6 .6 centimetres. So I could write it as centimetres and millimetres, millimetres or centimetres. So there's three different ways there that I could write that on there. 
So if you have a ruler handy, I want you to pause the video and go off and have a go at this activity. If you don't have a ruler, I want you to then have a think of the next question anyway, which two lines are equal in length, okay? So for those of you doing it, go and pause the video, go and draw your lines and then come back and see if you can answer the second question. For those of you that don't, just want you to sit and pause and think, well, which ones are the two equal lengths that you can see? Okay, so well done if you've managed to have a go at drawing your measurements. Did anyone happen to spot any of the two that were the same in length? Yeah, good. These two here. Okay, I know if I divide that by 10, because I know that there are 10 millimetres in a centimetre, I know that's going to give me 12.4. So 12.4 is the same as 12 centimetres and 0.4, which is 4 millimetres, isn't it? So if I converted that, got 120 at 4. Okay. Now, pay attention to this one. Okay, a lot of you lost the marks on this in the test papers that we did last week, and I know why. Okay. This is where the bar model comes into play and it's really, really important that you read the question properly because it actually it's a lot easier than I think some of you realise, okay? So, Eva walks three times further than Jack, okay? That there is a very important number, don't forget it. Altogether, they walk 3,200 metres. So, what we want to know is how far does Eva walk in kilometres? Because, you know, we know that she walks three times further than Jack. And altogether, they go 3,200 metres. So, Eva and Jack both have to do the same amount first, okay? So, if Jack's going to walk one lot, Eva's going to walk three lots. So, if Jack's got one block, Eva needs to have three blocks. Now, if I was to get rid of these two blocks, you can see that Eva has got the one and two on here, okay? They're exactly the same. So, they both walk the same distance here, but she walks two times further. So in total, she walks three times further than Jack. What a lot of you did is you multiplied the answer by um, three when you did this for the test question. Now you're all sitting thinking, I know exactly which question this was, okay? So what we need to do is we need to work out how much Jack walks so that we can work out what each one of these blocks is worth. Now, we know that all together, Okay, they walked 3,200 metres. Okay, so we need to work out how much Eva's walked all together. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four in total. Okay, so what you guys did is you all divided it by three for that question in the test paper last week, when actually you've got to divide it by four because Jack and Eva walk that same amount for that first block until she then walks two lots further, so three times in total, okay? So to work out what that would be all together would be divided by four. It's always important if you ever have a question like this, do a little doodle of a box thing, okay? Of um, a box thing, Miss Humphrey, how unprofessional, a bar model, okay? Because it will really, really help you, okay? So if we divided 3,200 by four, we know that's 800. That means that each one of those blocks is worth 800, okay? So we know that they've walked a total of 3,200. So they both walked 800 metres to start off with. The question says, well, how much further or how far does Eva walk in kilometres? So we need to work out what Eva's walked in total. So three times 800, it's going to give us 2,400, okay? If we then added the 800 on there, which is how far Jack walked, we'd get the total of 3,200. OK, so it's important that although, yes, it was three times further, we had to divide by four because you can't forget that Jack walked that same distance as well. So always do a bar model, OK, because it will help you. OK, oh, yeah. And if we converted that down to kilometres, we divided it by a uh, thousand, go one, two, three, be 2.4. OK, always remember it's sneakily where that comma is going to go. That's where your decimal is going to go there for your kilometres and your metres. Little trick there. So now that I've shown you that, let's do it backwards. See if you can do it backwards. So Eva walks three times further than Jack, which we already know, okay? Jack walks 1,200 metres less than Eva, okay? So we need to work out how far Eva's going to walk in kilometres. Now I'm going to go back to my bar, okay? I know that Eva walks three times the amount, okay? So Eva needs the three boxes. And Jack's only going to have the one box, okay? Because it's got to be three times more than what Jack walks, Okay? Now, if Jack's going to walk less than that, okay, we need to work out what the difference is. Okay, and I'm going to show you this rather than get you to have a think about this. So if we know that Jack walks less than Eva, that's going to be this missing gap here, isn't it? That's how much less 
he walks, which is the value of whatever these two boxes are, okay? So all we need to do there is know that because it's 1,200 meters less, we know that the distance from here to here is 1,200 because obviously that's how much further Eva walked if Jack walked 1,200 meters less. So if we've got 1,200 meters here and we've got these two boxes, what are we gonna do? Good, we're gonna divide it, okay? So again, if you think about it, 12 divided by two, that's gonna be our eight, uh, sorry, it's gonna be our six, add the two zeros, 600. Each one of those boxes is now worth 600. So between all four of them is going to be 600. So then to work out how much Eva walks, we're just going to multiply that by three. Three times six is 18, add the zeros, it's 1,800. Okay, if we then converted that into kilometers if we wanted to, that's gonna give us 1.8, okay? So it's always really, 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 really important. I can't stress, use the boxes to help you. We'll do a lot more work on using the bar model next year because it'll be really important coming up to your SATs, but I know that mm, the majority of you got that question wrong in the SATs, but I understand why, okay? So hopefully that's clarified a few things for you. So last question here then, this is an opportunity for you to have a go at this on your own. So we've got the table shows the masses of some of these fruit. What I would like to do is put the fruit in descending order, okay? You need to have a think about what you think descending order means, okay? Is it gonna go from the biggest to the smallest or is it gonna go from the smallest to the biggest, okay? Now, I'm gonna help you. I know some of you aren't gonna need this, but some of you will. Here is a number line to help you. Okay, I want you to pause the video and I want you might have to convert some of these and I want you to put them in descending order for me. All right, pause the video, have a go. Okay, so descending order is from biggest to smallest. Okay, remember ascending starts from smallest to biggest, starts from the beginning of the alphabet, A, ascending goes up, okay? So we're gonna have to convert some of these, okay, because we've got grams and kilograms. Now, because none of them have gone beyond a kilogram, it's easier to convert them smaller, so they go down to grams, okay? So if I convert my avocado and my grapefruit, I've got 205, 300, and 130. So easily, my grapefruit's gonna be the biggest. The next biggest is gonna be my avocado, then it's gonna be my orange, and then it's going to be my one little cherry. Okay, so well done if you were able to get those right. And had these been bigger, I might have then converted them up so that the rest of them are kilograms, but because they're all relatively no, low numbers, it's easier to convert them to that smaller measurement than going up the other way, okay? So your challenge now, okay, guys, I want you to have a look around your, I say your classroom, you're not at school, so have a look around your house, wherever you are, and I want you to make a list of two, uh, uh, two lists of items. One list of items that you'd measure the mass of in kilograms, so you'd need bigger measurements. And the other list of items you'd measure in grams, so anything that might have a small measurement on it, okay? So I'll give you an example. For kilograms, I'd probably weigh myself in kilograms. If I weighed myself in grams, I'd probably break the scales because the number would be massive. But at least in kilograms, it makes it look probably a little bit smaller. And if I had like my pencil, I'd probably weigh that in grams because that's not going to weigh a huge amount, is it? Okay. It doesn't have to be a particularly long list, an extensive list. I want at least six or seven in each one. Uh, each one you can do there. But I want you to just have a go at drawing out that table there and have a go. All right. I'm not going to set any challenge questions today, but I am going to attach an arithmetic paper where I want you over the next few days, because there'll be another video like this on Friday, I think, where there'll be no activity. Just want you to have a go um, at doing some practice questioning, especially some of the reasoning questions as well. OK, so well done for giving that a go. See how you get on with that list. And we will pick this up for our proper lesson with the worksheets for metric units tomorrow. All right. Good luck, year five.